How surprised were you by the trio being targeted this week? In retrospect, do you feel there's anything you could have done to avoid getting nominated for the first and last time? Um, hey, Mike Bloom, to answer your question, how surprised am I to see the trio targeted this week? And uh, if there was anything I could have done to avoid eviction, I was not surprised the minute that Leah won that the trio would be targeted as I knew the week before and the week before that, and probably weeks before that, that all trio, me, Kimo, and Rubina was a point of interest in the house, specifically with Leah um, and her associates, Quinn and Joseph. And so I wasn't surprised at all in terms of what I could have done to avoid, you know, nomination, getting evicted, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, that that's a question to still to be determined. I know that a lot of people, you know, in the goodbye messages kind of worded it in terms of me being a threat. And, you know, there was a lot of statements in terms of me having one of the better social games in the house. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't necessarily have a full answer for that question, um, but I think that perception is everything in this house. And so definitely if there was one thing I could have tried to do was to, um, you know, do an even better job earlier on in the game to dissuade those perceptions. During your HOH reign, you end up putting up your ally in Tucker and he gets evicted in the process. How do you look back on your decisions during that week, considering a member of the trio was nominated every week after that? Mm -hmm. Yes. So to answer your question, during my HOH, putting Tucker up and a member of my trio being nominated after um, that followed, I do think that the trio and, you know, our group, whether Tucker was here or not, would have been a target regardless. I don't think that had anything to do with the fact that Tucker got sent home or uh, that I ended up putting him up. Unfortunately, you know, I obviously didn't want Tucker to go home, but the reason he went up was because I needed him to win the veto and or the uh, AI arena. And unfortunately, he wasn't able to pull through. And so I wish he was able to pull through and bring in that win um, so that another person could have went home that week. Um, but ultimately, I do believe that everything happens for a reason. And I know now that Tuck is gone, now that there's one member of the trio, I'm hoping that Rubina and Kimo don't continue to get so easily targeted and people can now start coming for what I perceive as bigger threats. Talk to me about your relationship with Chelsea. How would your end game have looked between her and your trio? So in terms of my relationship with Chelsea and how that balances with the trio, Chelsea is someone that I value just as much as Kimo and Rubina in this game. She also, along with Kimo and Rubina, had my back since the very beginning. And so ideally what I would have loved in any alternative scenario is um, you know, seeing any one of them win definitely would have brought a lot of joy to my heart. But there was also the bigger purpose of wanting to see women at the end for me and the dream that, you know, in an alternative scenario, we could have seen three women of color at the end. Um, I think that would have won my heart, you know, being raised in an all female household. Um, I'm constantly rooting for women in every um, place that I walk into. And so I think that Chelsea was honestly an addition um, that people didn't necessarily know that she was part of, but I valued her just as much as I valued Kimo and Rubina in this game. Finally, give me your rapid fire thoughts on each of the remaining house guests, starting with Angela. Angela is, so to answer the question, what to describe each house guest, I would say Angela is passionate yet indecisive. Cam. Easily likable. Chelsea.
motivating and inspirational. Chemo. A kind and uh, moving soul. Leah. Calculative. Mackenzie. Fun and interesting. And finally, Rubina. A big sister.